And when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. That's the time to hide. See, we're here in, in probably even a precursor to the beginning of sorrows. We're in the beginning of the beginning of sorrows, and a lot of Christians are hiding, scared, running scared, okay? But up to that time, you see the betrayal of loved ones. You see, you see the love of many waxing cold. You see iniquity abound. You see this world waxing worse and worse and worse in almost a, a, like skyrocketing fashion at the beginning of sorrows. When that ends, right before the abomination of desolation is placed, that mark of the beast that comes by worshiping the image of the beast, once that's in place, right before that, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. You can't run and hide until that point. Okay, when that transfers over, and he says, when ye shall therefore see the abomination spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, stand where God deserves to stand, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor shall ever be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days should be shortened. The mercy of God steps in. As the world ramps up its control and tries to just call off everybody that would name the name of Christ. Call off anybody that would not bow to the image. God's mercy steps in. I believe the gospel will still be being preached, but now it's, it's real. Now you're underground. Now you're running. Now you're fleeing. Try to get to what? Verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun and moon is darkened. The moon doesn't give its light. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man coming in the clouds. And then look up for your redemption, draweth nigh. Then you can finally say, I've made it. I've finished the course. Whosoever shall uh, arrive, it says, it says the same shall be saved. He that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. That will be the salvation. That final salvation from the destruction of the flesh will be given to a few. Because this is describing a time of just chaos and just full-on vengeance coming from the devil and Satan and, and, and the, the hordes of this world coming upon God's chosen people, the believers. But God cares. Look at it. It says in verse 22, he's going to shorten those days. He's going to be merciful to us, not extend it as far as it would be. Verse 25, it says, Behold, I have told you before, none of you standing in this room now are ignorant of these things. And I know you've studied it out before and you've read these things. Behold, I have told you before, I'm going to shorten these days. You'll see these things coming. And he's ultimately coming for me. Coming for you. If you're alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, the gathering unto him, what a glorious day that will be. But we've got some work to do in the meantime. 